another pressure package look coming off the numbers. Wolford, back corner of the end zone, over the shoulder, oh. grab by Webster, and that is a touchdown. Simba Webster from 15 yards out. Hey. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you do that against the, the what you call it on Houston. Okay. Hey, hey, okay. I see you, man. No celebration. This guy's real humble. I watch it. He's real humble. No celebration. Just the, you like Barry Sanders when you get a touchdown. Just like, here, I just do what I do. I kind of regret not doing a celebration in the way I go. <laughs> right, 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 right. At least do something. You should figure out something like that's like for your people or like for your people even back home, like in the, in the Bay or if you, you know what I mean? like, if, if you had that, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Like, dance, like, tell me when they go or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the Bonzo Boys podcast. I'm your host, Blake Oisa, here with... Patrick Joe Bonza. Right? So, we are the podcast that highlights Congolese talent and talent from the African diaspora. So, today we got a real special guest. This guy doesn't know how much of a fan we are. All right, ever. So I'm gonna read a little quick bio for him uh, about him. So today's guest is a wide receiver for the LA Rams, Inglewood, right? In 2014, <laughs> after a brilliant varsity football career, which included throwing for 22 touchdowns and running for 28 touchdowns. Well, you don't, you got 50 TDs? Well, it's a beast. Right? <laughs> as a wide receiver to East Washington University, along with his twin brother and Zuzi, during his time as a EWU Eagle, his devastating quickness made him a problem for defenses and allowed him to rack up 1,379 yards and 11 touchdowns in his final season. In May of 2019, he signed with the LA Rams as an undrafted free agent. However, it was not; it didn't take long for the head coach and GM to notice his skills. He would be a major factor in the following preseason, catching the at least three passes in each of his four games, Beast, and with finishing with 15 receptions, 450 yards, and a touchdown. His hard work and his versatility as both the wide receiver and returner would earn him a spot on the regular season roster. It is our pleasure to welcome to the podcast Simba Webster. Wait, this is a what's your 40 time? About 40 time. It was like a 4 4. Patrick, 4 4. You know how fast this dude is? A four, four? What was your vert? A oh, vert, shoot. I, honestly, I did terrible on a vert uh, during pro day, but I think I'm on prior like around 36, probably. I was, I was about to say, because I saw on that catch. Yeah, I, came off the injury. I was coming off the injury, so I did what I can. <laughs> well, it, it, man, okay, we'll, we'll, hey, before we before we go, um, tell us about yourself, um, where you're from, where you grew up, and et cetera, and heritage, and et cetera. So, man, my name is Simma Webster, uh, straight out of the Bay Area, California. The Bay. Uh, raised, you know, mom's Congolese. Oh. And pop from San Francisco. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I have a twin as well. We're, we're the babies of the family of three uh, older brothers and two older sisters. We're the babies. So, yeah. you know, we're a big family. But so they, you know, we we taught right from wrong, you know, from them and everything like that, you know. Mm. Grew up uh, in a nice neighborhood, you know, earned my way. And worked hard to, to, I mean, to be where I'm at now. You know, I'm grateful for the opportunity and grateful to be here. Yeah, man. First of all, like you're representing us like properly, and you're doing your thing. Like when, because our parents know each other, so my mom knows your mom, and my mom right. told me she was like, "Oh, there's a Congo boy on the Rams," and I was like, "Wait, wait, wait <laughs> I was like, "Real?" So I was just like, "Look, the search is like no Simba Webster." And then I remember when I called your dad. First of all, shout out to your pops, because your pops is like hardcore pro black. I love it. <laughs> it's like, it's like black at gmail.com. I said, Oh, I love his dad. Like, yeah. so your dad and your mom. Um, so Simba, like you playing in the NFL, it's funny because you chose a sport like a sport you're successful in, but why football? Like, you know, especially as being Congolese, like for me, I grew up playing basketball, right? Because you know, I grew up in I grew up in LA. So right. in America, it was just like, oh, basketball, but like, you know, us Congolese, like my dad played soccer, or we right. played but Congolese we play soccer, why football? Well, it was kind of bred it in me. Um, my family was, was especially my, on my father's side, was hardcore football, you know, from my <laughs> pops, brothers, my uncles, and then my older brothers. You know, I was born into just football. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I'll get stories from like my my dad or my or my cousin saying I will be like one or two years old trying to imitate the slow motions on the NFL <laughs> replay or something like. Right. You know, I mean, I, remember that but yeah. it was great you know and so football i mean obviously i love different sports i played soccer my first sport uh baseball ran mm. track 
playing basketball. I, I love those sports, but obviously basketball, I don't have the height to be in the NBA. So me, I, I, I didn't stop baseball, but you know how much they're paying right now. Whoa. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, isn't, that, isn't it crazy how, like, Simba, like, both of us don't play baseball, but baseball, like, less injuries, contact, the money. Long term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, I mean, I, I, I mean, shoot! I wish I was playing baseball. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But, uh, I'm kidding. Let, let me but, ask you, this, Patrick. Before you go on, let me ask you this: Like, did you play all those sports until high school, or once you hit like tenth grade, you're like, "Oh, it's only football." So, first off, I play. I started playing soccer at age three, mm-hmm. and I and then like during my soccer, I started to uh, add in basketball as well and did baseball but then mm-hmm. once i got to the age around seven or eight i said you know what i want to do football but then it was during soccer season so i had to cut off soccer for good right. Right. so i started doing football uh football in the fall basketball in the winter baseball in the spring and this right. summer was just working out for football so i was never taking breaks all the way up until about seventh grade where i stopped doing baseball it, it then started doing track and then mm-hmm. from there on the same it was the same and even in high school i was a triathlete fall football winter basketball mm. uh, spring track and then summer was getting i mean getting prepared for football so it was it was definitely good and then my senior year i got cut off basketball just football and track it's amazing yeah. i'm sorry patrick it's amazing because i'm 35 and i thought we were the last generation of playing multiple sports it seemed like after us there was like specialties you know because you know like right. quarterbacks they just do seven on seven all year and right. not AAU all year like the fact that you played all those different sports you think mm-hmm. that helped you become a better athlete because you when even on that play that we just showed or whatever you have great feet work that's from, right. that's from all those different sports you play knowing the angle and all this stuff or whatever you think that played a part like you're great like playing all those different sports made you a better athlete Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, in each of the sports that I played had different techniques and different mechanics that, you know, you can't you can't use in different sports. And some right. have similarities where you can use in, in those uh, different sports, you know. So I kind of took everything and add my bits of pieces from, you know, watching highlights of, you know, certain people in those sports that are great yeah. to me, you know. Oh, so I was just... Watching. <laughs> I just try to be, you know, the best the best athlete I can be in each of those sports. So it was definitely great. You know, me and my brother definitely had fun with that whole experience. Mm, strong. Shout out to the shout out to Zuzi. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah man. Yeah, man. Uh, so this, and you, you already started touching on it, obviously, just your past. So, uh, you know, as we talked about in the bio, you know, you were a quarterback in high school, and then obviously you became a wide receiver in college. So what was it like making that transition? Oh, the transition? I mean, obviously – you know, I, I thought that, it, I mean, at first I thought um, it wouldn't be that bad, you know, mm-hmm. and come to find out, you know, it's a, I mean, and, and obviously going to a real prestigious receiver university school, Eastern Washington, who had really, really you know, oh, really, really Cooper Cup, who's on the Los Angeles Rams. Right, right, right. Oh, he's a beast too, by the way. You know, I can name other five All Americans, you know, that, you know, that were definitely. Wow. You know, so, you know, it was receiver university, you know, so uh, I was going into, you know, to a great coach who yeah. Nick Edwards, who, who brought me in and you know, and just got me right. At first, it was it was a struggle at first, you know, okay. starting with my receiver stance to running my routes. You know, I wasn't as polished as the other guys, but I put in the work and I, you know, I put in the work, you know, for the next two or three years and everything worked out. You know, I, um, I didn't give up. So. Yeah. I'm just going to be in this position. How many, wait, how many years did you um, play college? So I played all four years. I started my my last two years. Mm-hmm. It's funny because how did – how it's weird because how does quarterbacking help you as a wide receiver? Uh, quarterback, you know, as a quarterback – I'm, I mean, it's one of the hard positions. I mean, obviously, it's pretty much the hardest position on the on the field. You know, you have to know everything. What's what's everybody's jobs at all times? Uh, you know, different call outs. I mean, when you get to a certain point, you can start calling out the coverage of the defense. What what are they? Doing? You know, what which area can you pass it to? Right. Uh, plays, make sure everybody's in the correct spot. The cadence going back and forth from the coach to the to the yeah. huddle. Get- plays it's so much going on so it it teaches you the the whole aspect of the game 
Right. So then now I'm going to receiver only have to only have to learn just a fraction of all that, you right. know. So it's it's a lot easier to understand what I'm doing, what's my rules, you know. So mm-hmm. it was good. It was a good transition. That's, a, that's, a, okay. that's amazing. Do you, yeah. do you ever? Oh, wait, go ahead, Patrick. Go ahead, Pat. Oh no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, do you ever do you miss playing quarterback? Like having all that control, <laughs> or you're like cover two? This that slant, all, all those audibles. You miss that? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. You know, I started playing quarterback at age ten and stopped at age eighteen. Um, mm-hmm. it was fun. I mean, I can't complain. But at the same time, you know, I'm this is my position now, receiver. You know, so yeah. I've been trying to be the best receiver and perfect my craft as best as I can now. You know, I've made the transition. I can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, Patrick. I gotta ask this question. Who is the wide receiver in the NFL right now? I'm, I'm talking to a pro athlete, hilarious, um, that you look at, like, even past or present where it's like, oh, I look at my game. Like, I like how he makes this cut. I like his hands. Like, you're my favorite wide receiver, but my second favorite wide receiver is DeAndre Hopkins. Like, he's a monster. Yo, he's a monster. Right. Uh, for me, I mean, obviously, I'm not the biggest, tallest receiver out there. You know, right. I'm, I'm kind of on the uh, smaller edge. So I kind of look at guys who are around my uh, my height, my weight, you know, yeah. around that. So the guy that I've looked up to, especially c- uh, growing up, was Deshaun, was a Deshaun Jackson. I was a huge fan of right. since he was in college. You know, I was only maybe in middle school or something or elementary. Right. I was, but I was a huge fan of uh, Deshaun Jackson and um, Antonio Brown. I was a huge fan of, of an Antonio Brown. And, uh, wow. you know, I, I watched a lot of film on those guys. You know, it's amazing because, like, that's what makes – that's that's how I know you're going to have a long career in this because we could have said Randy Moss. You could have said Michael Irvin. You could have said those are, like, you know, six foot four. Like, but like, people don't know how big Michael Irvin is. I met this dude. I was like, this dude's a monster, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all, you know. Right, but the fact you look at like people that are like, okay, this is my size, my position. Would you play mostly slot? I, I mean, obviously, I'm versatile. I mean, so I can play outside mm-hmm. and inside. You know, depending on the offense where they want to line me up. You know, I make sure I know every position. Right. So right. you ready, coach? Want to put me there? I can put. You know, you know, I can play there. So I'm always okay. prepared. This is great. Go, 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 ahead, Pat. Um, so just one. Obviously, we talked about before. So I understand when you started with the team, uh, unsigned free agent, and I heard that called redshirting. Is that is that the right term? Oh, red shirting is for college. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so college, in college it, it's a college term. Um, pretty much is, I mean, the best explain it is pretty much uh, you sit out pretty much your first year. I mean, yeah, I mean, like you know, your first year, but then, I mean, like academically, you're not sitting out, you know, you're going through. So mm-hmm. then when you start the next the next season, so like your second year, you'll be a red shirt freshman. That's right. the term, um, oh. you know, the term of it, you know. So you don't really lose a year of football. You get what I'm saying, but, you know. But your but your academics is still on track. Okay, and yeah. obviously, besides the academics, how's that different from obviously the, that version of it in, in the NFL? Um. Oh wait, yeah, um, I didn't understand your question. I'm sorry. So I mean, obviously, the academic part of it that's different. But other than that, like, because right. obviously, unsigned free agent, that situation is it similar? Oh, like, how is it different? Oh, okay. So. I mean, you. I mean, I mean, obviously, you got your guys who are drafted. You know, within the rounds of one through seven. You know, right. under the free agents are guys pretty much. Uh, they sign during the. Uh, I mean, for the preseason, pretty much. You know, mm-hmm. and because uh, at first they start with a fifty-three man roster, right? After the draft, they have to get to a ninety-man roster uh, mm-hmm. for the preseason. Okay. And so, once the preseason is over, they have to trim that down to a fifty-three man roster. Right. Right. You know, and then the, and the whole thing cycles again. Okay. And I read, like, after the draft ended, like, they were immediately on the phone with you, the Rams right. specifically. Right. Um, right when the last pick went in, I got a, I, I got a call within seconds from uh, Sean McVay. Okay. Oh, the head coach. <laughs> Sean McVay. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's were they head. already, like, looking at you, talking to you even before the draft? Because I know you before, went. I mean, yes. I mean, before the draft, you know, coaches call the athletes, you know, um, you know, uh, just getting like just background uh, views of the, of the uh, I mean, like of the athletes that they're trying to see who they can pick up and everything like right. that. You know, so yeah, I I kind of had an idea of certain teams that you know were looking my For way. Sure. Like the Patriots, you visited them too, right? Or they they, they were looking. Um, at I met them. with them during my pro day. I, I met with them during my pro day. No. Wait, did you meet, you met you met Belichick? Oh no 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 no! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, because no, you know it's weird because as a fan, I know football enough where if like the Patriots are interested in you, they have there's a Patriot player, and one thing the players always commonly have is like good backgrounds or structured backgrounds and good education. You know what I'm saying? Because they're like, hey, you gotta know everything. Because I've heard he'll ask players like. If you're a offensive lineman, well, what's a defensive lineman's job? And I'm like, yo, that's not even his position. But right. you know what I mean? But he's wait, the, game, you the top like um 100 NFL. I'm sorry. You saw the top 100 NFL, right. Right. right? So when I saw him talk about football players from like the 20s, I was like, okay, I see why he's great. Like he knows <laughs> everything. Like you know, say he know he knows everything. But the football guru. <laughs> but with Simba, why do they bring 90 people in for training camp if they're if they're like to be honest with you, I'm not I'm I'm not too in the depth. I don't I don't really know the full meaning of it. Yeah. You know? I mean, from my perspective, it's you know, a guy like me who's been who's be, I mean being undrafted, yeah. you know, it gives players opportunities, you know, to try to make the team. Right. right, right. You, know, you know, obviously, you know, you wish you were with, within those rounds, you know, getting picked, you know, yeah. I mean getting picked, obviously, but you still having a chance to uh to uh showcase your to, talent. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, so your talent being an undrafted free agent, you know, you have to come in, you have to grind because you don't get, I mean, obviously you don't get the, the same opportunity that the other guys get. So, I mean, obviously it's all about the opportunity. That's right. Let me ask you this. How, this is not even a question we ask. I'm just thinking, how frequently do like team fights happen? Like, is team. it that frequently? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, because. Um, uh-huh. Um, I mean, honestly. Not really, but I mean, there's a competitive standpoint, you know. Like it, it it's not really fights. It's it, it's it, it, it's just frustration of trying to win with yeah. each other. You know, trying to make the each player better. Yeah. You know, so it gets really competitive. At, I mean, at times, you know. But at the end of the day, everybody respects everybody, and right. we brush it off, move on. Just competitiveness. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and you did a lot of interviews that we saw and you talk about having patience and not rushing the process. Like right. what was that? Was there an experience that instilled that value in you? Because I can tell on your Instagram of Simba, you're very like, you, like you're, you're like present. Like you don't think of yourself like, oh, I'm in the NFL. I'm like, don't, like some people will go crazy. Like I'm right. excited for you. You know, like I feel I'm more <laughs> excited than you. You know what I'm Like, yo, he's in the league. Right. Um. Well, it happened in college. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, coming from high school, going to college, everybody were, was that star player on their team, that guy, right. the impact player on their team. Right. And going to college, you have to realize, I mean, I, I mean, at first nobody realizes, but everybody that's on that team in college were that was that guy at their high school. So everybody comes with that pride, that ego, that, right. you know, that persona thinking like, you know, I'm going to be that guy here. You know, right, I'm right. on I'm already the guy, but me making that transition from quarterback to receiver and then thinking I'm going to play right away and, you know, going to make, yeah. you know, just uh, showcase my talents. I realized there's guys in front of me who are great receivers. Like I said, there's a receiver university pretty right, well. Right, right, right. Cooper Cup, um, who's on the Rams as well. Yeah. Kendrick Horn, who's on the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. Uh, Shaq Hill right now, who's in the CFL, you know, you had guys in front of me and, and like these three guys are all American who are in front of me, you know, wow. and it was, you know, and obviously nobody wants to play behind anybody, right, you know, right, right. but, and at first I had that frustration in my head and, you know, like, uh, I think I should be playing. I think I should be playing, you know, you, you, I mean, obviously it's confidence, but also it's a little bit, you know, being too, too, um, how can I say, too Thank selfish you. in a way. Too okay. selfish, you know, mm. and so I had I had to I had to sit down with my dad. I, I mean, I talk to my dad about it, and I'm just like I'm frustrated, you know. I feel like I should be on the field, right? And do more playing time or whatnot. Mm. And he told me, and I I will never forget this. He told me maybe this is just God testing your patience, right? You know, and. Right. That that clicked to me, you know. That clicked to me. It humbled me in so many ways. You know, I said, you know what? Let me accept my role. You know, everybody has a role in their team. Right now, I'm not where I want to be, but I need to accept my role where I am right now. So I, you know, be a team player. Be, um, it, I mean, just for the love of the game, you know. 
Right. You accept your role now, and then soon your time will come. You know, right. so that's what I did. I told myself, you know what? Relax, take a deep breath. Don't rush it. Trust the process. Right. It will work out. You know, and and I and I'm seeing guys, you know, starting from their first year all the way through. You know, and I'm yeah. thinking to myself, that's not my route. That's their route. You have to stay. And I, uh, that's why I, I emphasize to to the younger players. Don't worry about anybody that's in the same predicament as you. Stay in your lane. Everybody goes through bumps, bumps and uh, bruises. Bumps or bruises along the road of right. their route, though. Of their route, you know. Some may be shorter. Some may be later. You know. Right. And mine came short. You know, and mine came uh, from the jump. And so, I just say, you know, what? I'm worried about me. Worry about what I'm doing. Give my uh, my my 100 effort. Right. And on God's hands, and you know me. I started for the for the last two years of my of my college career. Mm. That was my time, you know. Time. I mean, it was my time to shine, and you know what? It all worked out, and that's why I emphasize. You know what? This. I mean, like this is what I need to do. What I need to embed. You know what? I can also teach people who are coming behind me who have that same frustration. You know, yeah. so trust in the process. Let it all work out, put in God's hands and just just going after it. It's a am- it's amazing because trusting mm-hmm. the process when you get it, you become you're you're you appreciate it more because you're like, man, if I would have got it when I wanted it, I wouldn't have been ready. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, you know, getting you ready for that moment. You know, I, yeah. I feel like I feel like everything happens for a reason in, in yeah. my eyes. I feel like everything happens for a reason. So Maybe at the time I wasn't ready yet, you know. Uh-huh. Now I I was more mature. I was more humbled. I was, and obviously, I'm glad that happened for me because I had the chance to learn from these great receivers. Right. You know, great receivers. Uh, Cooper Cup and those guys. Like, I've learned so much from them watching film, watching film with them. You know, and then watching their film after they left and uh, what they seen. And then so when I came into the game, you know, when I'm starting, I see what they seen now. I you know, it makes the game so much easier for me. So right. I'm and grateful for, it, for that to happen. And you know what's great too, um, Simba? Like, mm-hmm. and I was me and Patrick talk about this all the time off camera. Just do the work, because as you know, you don't know who's some people are watching. Just right. do the just do That's the work. Right. It don't matter. Like, you know, our podcast we just started it. You know, what a humble brag. But we've had bigger people that I'm like, yo, how did you get in contact with us? They're just like, no, I just been watching because you've been consistent. Right. You see the grind. Right. They're like, who doesn't respect right. the grind? Uh, right. Patrick, you want to get the next one? Or, uh, 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 yeah, get the next one. Uh, now, nah, you take care of that one, fam. That one? Which, which one is it? Oh, okay. Okay. Who's your favorite NBA? Oh, okay. We said NFL player. You you brought out wide receivers, but what, who's your favorite NFL player all time? Like, do you have a top five? Oh, I have a five. Oh, a top five is hard. Okay, you can even go position. You can do position or whatever. It doesn't. It don't. It don't matter. But who are like five? Yo, know, I watch them. They influence I mean, me. The players that I've looked up to, uh-huh. just overall, first of all, Jerry Rice. Incredible. You know, growing up in the Bay Area, you know, growing up in the Bay Area, I was in a 49ers friend growing up, mm-hmm. and you know, hear my dad talk about Jerry Rice, and then me looking him up on YouTube at a young age, seeing the work ethic that he had, right. and you know, that was something that I try to. Imitate, you know, work hard, put the work in, everything will work out. Uh, second, I will have to say Michael Vick. Incredible. You know, Michael Vick, for Incredible. sure. Michael Vick. Interesting. Michael Vick. Quarterback, quarterback who, who runs. Quarterback exactly. who does plays. Yeah. I, I, I watched him. Yeah. I, I used to watch his highlights before my high school football game. Yeah. <laughs> everything, you know. So I was uh, – Yo, you know, yo, let me tell you something. They said Michael Vick would be at top speed, like the biochemistry of his body, at his third step. You know, crazy that is. Yeah, he's different. He's different. He, he, he's a different breed. Different Michael breed. Vick a different breed. A yo. different breed for yo, sure. Oh, he was a killer on Madden 04, by the way. He was a crazy. Oh, Sure. <laughs> everybody, everybody, him. please, everybody was, you know, all you gotta do is just run. You can run for 600 yards. Go with your list. Keep going. My fault. My fault. Um, those two was, I, I, and then obviously Deshaun Jackson, um, mm-hmm. 
Antonio Brown. Right. Uh, and I mean, I mean, I'm a fan of the game, so yeah. my, I have to put in a, a defensive player. I have to put a prime time. Uh, you, know, you, 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 you go. I have my notes. If you didn't put prime, we would have had a problem. <laughs> Deion, Sanders, Deion Sanders was that guy, you know. No. I, I, I was a huge fan of Deion watching his highlights and everything. He just his persona, his his attitude, how he came about, you know, you, you got to love it. How crazy is it that you could have a guy like him or Rod Woodson and be like, don't worry about that side? That's crazy. You know what type of athlete you have? Yeah, he's different. Don't worry about yeah, that he, side. That's good. That's that's a different breed right there. Can I give you my Can I give you my five? Yeah, please. So, um, D- Prime Vic, Jerry Rice, who I think is underrated because you know what? He wasn't as flashy. Like technically, mm-hmm. he's like the most technically sound football player ever. Like really? Who would you say? Jerry Rice. Oh, Jerry Rice for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's the most yeah. technically sound. Like, but he's not You're flashy, right. so right. we forget him. You know what I'm saying? Right? His, and, 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 and his record still stands for a reason. So I'm exactly. Right. Especially when you hear stories like he used to tra- catch, he used to, his dad used to throw bricks at him to catch footballs. Like he never dropped balls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's different. He's a different. Right. You know, he's different, right? Work, his record, I think, is on a whole other level. Um, you got to put the freak, Randy Moss. Like, oh, Randy, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm Randy Moss. Randy Moss. Yeah. Randy Moss. Randy Moss. Randy Moss. Randy Moss. I, I, I was thinking out of my head. Right. I said, right. I'm, I mean, I mean, obviously, I picked Deshaun Jackson. I mean, I mean, Antonio Brown because of my size, but right, 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 right. You know, I'm picking Randy. You know, you know, I'm hey, Randy. He's there. Yo, let me tell you something. Game. Remember the Thanksgiving game when he against Dallas. Remember, he wanted to go to Dallas. Right. Right, and they didn't pick him. Right. So that that Thanksgiving game, he had four catches for three touchdowns, like 180 yards. Oh, 180 yards. I remember that. Crazy. I remember that. I remember that. Randy that, Moss was different. You know, that's why we. We use the, the word boss now, you know. Right, 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 right. I'm sorry, we're, we're, we're just having. A, hey, no, no. Do your thing. I, look, I football. I don't watch a whole lot of it. I have nothing contributed to this part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, so, so simple, my fifth, Barry Sanders. Oh, Barry Sanders. Was cold, right? He was so cold. He was so cold. I, honestly, like, if I if I could, I mean. There's so many players I can, you know, right, very right, right, Walter right. Payton, like you know, right, those, right, you know, right, those guys right. like that, they're different. Like, right. ah, it's crazy. Like, it's, it's like when I think about Barry, and it's like a no knock on Emmett Smith, like you said, Walter oh, Payton, right, like, right, right, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, whatever, right? But it's just a lot of different players you can think of. But Barry's like elusiveness, elusiveness. wiggle is no just. Like, you don't teach that, man. You can't. You can't. <laughs> See? You, cannot, you, can't. you can't teach that. Um, Patrick, you want to get number six? Some, once again, man, any of these football questions, I'll right. leave to you, brother. <laughs> so, even throughout your, your college career and now you're, you're starting a great professional career, is who's right. the hardest player you had to go against? Who's the hardest, like, DB or what you call safety? Like, man, this dude, like, I got to be technically sound. Yeah. Like, you got to go right. I mean, who's he? I mean, he's on the team, J- Jalen Ramsey. What, yo? Jalen Ramsey. He's a monster. I would have to say Jalen Ramsey. You know, he's gonna give him. You know, uh, in practice, he's. You know, you can see why he's one. Of, he, I mean, he's he's labeled as one of the best DBs, arguably the best DB in the league. You know, has the size, he has the speed. You know, he's smart. He mm-hmm. can. You know, he has great technique, great mechanics. You know, to make a play. So, you know what bothers me personally. Like, as a fan of sports, like, hearing you, it's great because you're in professional sports. You're in the part of the, the hardest sport and the respect level you have for other guys. And it bothers me as a fan when I watch the media, especially somebody like Jalen Ramsey. They talk about this dude like this dude has no skill, like him and other players. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know what I mean? Like, there's like, oh, like, I'm from L.A. Kobe passed away. For years, everybody hated Kobe. But it's like. You cannot knock somebody that has over thirty thousand points. That's talent. That's work yeah. ethic. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? like if Jalen Ramsey wasn't good, he wouldn't be in the league. You know what I'm right. saying? You know what I'm hey. saying? That yeah. dude is good. These guys are these guys are good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So Jalen Ramsey. So on your team, there's nobody like um. I'm, no, you know I don't want to give. No, we're not gonna. You're not gonna answer an opponent. Forget that. No, no, no. Because we about to start the season. No, we're not doing that. Not at all. Um. So. You're gonna have a long playing career ahead of you, Simba. 
what are your plans after NFL? Have you thought about that? Is it in the back of your mind? Because, you know, the lifespan mm-hmm. of NFL players, like three to five years, you know what I'm right. saying? And then everybody right. like, to worry about the concussions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Have you, if not, no problem, but have you thought about that? I mean, I, I, mean, I kind of did, you know. I definitely, right now, I want to use my platform to give me opportunities for after football. You know, I, I, I personally want to be an entrepreneur after football. You know, right. I'm starting that now, you know, with, you know, getting my getting my hands on connections and networking my way. I mean, out here in L.A., but obviously in the Bay Area, you know, I was up there in the Seattle area, Spokane area up there in Washington. Right. But then me traveling to all these places, I want to meet new people. I want to make new networks, make, make investments. I mean, more wow. investments. Hmm. Uh, we need to introduce I, him to a friend of oh, ours. Hey, we got to go. Yeah. We got a guy. <laughs> and stuff like that. And then obviously I want to, uh, you know, be an owner one day, you know, on my, I mean, on my own business. Even I, I always had the idea of uh, opening up a sporting complex uh, back home in the Bay Area. So that's one thing I had in mind as well. So I want to use my platform to uh, make that happen. Oh, yeah. Now, first of all, you will because you got the right mindset. Like, like, how old are you? 24, right? 24, correct. 24. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm talking to like a, a grown, a full grown ass man. So, yeah, <laughs> Blake, did you catch the problem? He was like, Oh, I was watching YouTube videos as a young, as like a young child. I was like, Wait, right, 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 yeah. right. That was me watching film, uh, just learning the game. But no, you said young child. I was like, Wait a minute, YouTube came out when I was in high school. How, how young right. is he? Oh, college. College. oh my goodness, Patrick, we're getting old. Oh my goodness. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. You know, hey, Simba, this, Simba, this is great. Uh, we were Simba Webster of the LA Rams. Um, as a player, how has COVID nineteen like affected practice, working out? I mean, this we're in like this weird predicament. Like our whole like, there's no, there will never be normal. There's gonna be a new normal, right? Right. Exactly. So how has this been like? Uh, uh, how has this affected you? Uh, I mean. It's been, you know, for I mean, for everybody, it's been, I mean, kind of rough just adapting to the whole new this environment what's going on you know the six yeah. di- six feet different you know i mean the face mask the six feet of a part you know being home i mean just home order quarantine or whatnot you know uh-huh. and i hope everybody who's you know dealing with this right now i hope they're doing fine i hope they you know recover soon you know uh-huh. like it, it's rough um shoot it's it's affecting the whole world you uh-huh. know not just people who are working but uh-huh. even sports you know they had to, you know, obviously cancel the NBA season. Right, right. right. Uh, uh, the uh, the NFL draft was different. You know, it had to be yeah. everything virtual. You know, right. Um, as well as you know, us meeting in the off season or everything the virtual meetings. You know, and right. so it's 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 definitely an adjustment. You know, but I mean, obviously, we can overcome it as a whole. I, I mean, as a whole nation, as a whole world. You know, that's something yeah. that we can yep, fight yep. on. Fight against. You have you have real you have real good perspective, real good. So like, <laughs> do you know any plans how the NFL is going to try to handle games? Because I like how the NFL is like they're carrying on like COVID won't be here, which is good mentally. You don't want this virus to like overwhelm you and not to think positive. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so, right. we'll, we'll handle this. We'll figure out a way. Have you got any right. word like? Because like, when does like OTA start stuff like that? Shoot, OTA. I think I believe OTA is supposed to start. I believe this week. Um, uh, I mean, planned out. Uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, this week, next week. I mean, I'm not too sure, but mm-hmm. you know, obviously, this whole pandemic thing is going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have no idea on what's to happen later in the future. I mean, like later this year. So I, yeah. I, I, I have no clue. So. Okay. And okay. As we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully it goes back to normal. So, you know, you can get us some free tickets. What happened, Patrick? What? <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry. What happened? Okay. All right. No, but, uh, but yeah. so, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, you and your brother can come, you know, your brother can pick us up. We'll go right to the game. You know, we, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do yo, that. Yo, can I, let me ask you, I mean, I don't want to be, you, you don't have to answer this, but who's the strongest dude on your team? Well, I think Aaron Donald is like the strongest dude on earth. I believe so too. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so too. Aaron Donald, uh, he's a different breed. He's, he's, he's a different breed. Yo, if people like he's not fat. No, 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 no. He's solid. He's solid. He's solid. <laughs> Yo, there was one play. Me and my homeboys were watching this dude, and I don't know what lineman he like. He did some Reggie White rip right through him, 
and he grabbed the quarterback and threw him like a dog. But as he threw the quarterback, he already knew he'd be down, and he was like, um, started um, like I'm slagging down for uh, what you call a sack. And I was like, yo, the quarterback's not down yet. But he knew he was that strong. He was like, he's not getting up. I was like, who is this dude? Yeah, he, man, he's he um he he worked for that. You know, he he <laughs> did the work. The results happen. Yo. He's you know, he's everybody knows who. I mean, everybody knows that man. He's he's a different breed. He's Look, different breed. him. Different breed. The Jadavian Clowney, like dudes like that, like yeah. JJ Watt, um, like I, I want to know parts of that. Like Ray Lewis, like let me tell you something, Simba. The <laughs> fact that you go middle and there's a linebacker waiting there, you tough as a motherfucker. Let me tell you, like that's why I play ball. Like that lineman, when that Ray Lewis nigga hits you, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Like yo, you Patrick, you go through the middle. <laughs> These linemen, they're not fucking around. They're not playing. You're right. gonna, gonna tag you right. out. Even with the rules being like, like it's not, it's not as physical. It's still physical. Like right. It's, it it is. It definitely no. is. It definitely is. Hey, just oh. wondering. This, uh, we didn't have it in here, but I'm just wondering for you. Just based off what Balenco just said, like, what's the worst, like, hit you've gotten? Mm. <sighs> the worst hit I've gotten. Oh, wow. shoot. I'll have to say this past season against the 49ers. Got a concussion. <laughs> um, I got sandwiched. Oh. I got sandwiched and I was out. Um, yeah, I was out. I couldn't. I rem- Next thing you know, I'm on the sidelines and I'm lost. Like, oh, we're playing a game? Like, it was that oh, bad. Jesus. It was that bad. It was that bad. It was that bad. I was bleeding up here. I'm, I think oh. you can see my scar on my yeah. forehead up here. Maybe from it, um, but then I, I had uh, got my uh, memory back about it and everything. I'm fine now, but uh, and I, that had, I mean, that had to be something that uh, I definitely was probably my biggest hit up possibly. Hey, you, you, <laughs> let me say something, Patrick. He's a hell of a man to play in the league. <laughs> no, I believe it. I, I believe. It. No, for real. Man's game is a man's game, man. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, that, no, that, that's what I'm saying. So, like, when you see people be paying for, like, and you will, when you're playing for, like, 10, 12 years in the NFL, you're like, you know what type of hits this, licks this dude has took? Football, like, football ain't no joke. Like, yeah, I, played no joke. I played football until, like, the seventh grade, and I just focused on just focused on, on basketball. But right. because of the physicality of football, I like to add physicality in basketball when I was growing up. Like, me and my friends, we like getting hit. Like, it's like, oh, it's fun. You know what I'm saying? But no, we get hit by a football player that's like two percent crazy. Nah, I ain't with it. Nah, I ain't with it. But let me ask you this: yeah. Yeah. we talk about um, so we talk about COVID nineteen. You know, we're in an unfortunate situation right now. We're not even America, but the world is protesting because of George Floyd's death. Right. Like, how do you? Not how, but how can I say this? Uh, do you think how? Why do you think it's important for athletes like yourself to have a voice? Well, I mean, we have the platform, you know, everybody, a lot of people who are young uh, from different platforms, different environments, different parts of the world, whatnot, look up to athletes and everything like that, you know, and this, this situation, what's going on, you know, is, it's, it's two things is right and the wrong, you know, and obviously me, you know, as a black man here in America, you know, uh, I'm going for just you know, I'm saying equality. You know, we want we want better for our people and everything like that. And I can say that I was once, you know, a part of the injustice, just uh, racial slurs being being told my way, and just you know being st- uh, a stereotype just off of who I mean of what I look like. I got a black guy with dreads, right? And everything like that you know. So uh, I just want you know change. You know, everybody wants to change. You know, and you right. know. Uh, Martin Luther King was fighting for it. Malcolm X was fighting for it, you right. know, and still to this day, and that was a long time ago. I thought it was, what, half a century ago, you know? Right. Yeah. They were still fighting the same fight that they were fighting back then. Right. And, you know, and things need to change, you know, we need action. We need action, you know, and it's not just going to take just us Blacks, you know, it's going to take other people from different uh, uh, cultural backgrounds, you know, different, um, uh, you know, just different races, you know, to step up too. you know, you, you got people what uh, around the world right now that's, you know, exactly. So you, that, 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 I mean, that's how you know that this is a huge issue, a right. huge issue that needs to be addressed. And, you know, I feel like, you know, we need to 
uh, take it up a notch, you know, and like, and I, I, I just pray that this don't just be a thing, you know, a okay. hot little topic just for like two, uh, like a few weeks or a month or whatnot. You know, I want this. Let's keep, you know, keep it going, keep it going. You know, let's go for how yeah. long, however long it takes, you know, until they, until the government or whatnot, you know, Make says, you know, what, we yeah. need to fix, it, you know, you know uh, they're not going to stop until we fix something. So let's, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going as a people, as a movement. You know, what's crazy. Like, isn't it weird? We got the perfect storm for the whole world to like notice. Cause you know, we're so busy now, right? Like before, yeah. like, you're training, you're trying to, you're like, you're training all year round. You're worried about this, worried about that. You're dying. People are working. People are going to school, this, that. Right. The pandemic's made us stop, right? We have to, now we're paying attention to our families. Husbands are being, men are being better husbands. Women are being right. better wives. We're being better to our family. And right. then we see this, this killing. And it was like, oh, everybody just paid attention. I was like, hey, that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? What's happening? Yeah. Right? Like, uh, right. You know, it's like, it, it's just the biggest topic right now. You know, that's the only topic pretty right. much, you know? Right. I mean, wow, right. Obviously, yeah. obviously, that's a bad situation. You would never want a bad situation like that to be a topic, you know what, things need to change just because of a bad situation. Of course not, you know, wow. but it happened. I mean, may he rest in peace, may the other people who were killed just, as well. you know, a part of the police brutality, or I mean, how, or, I mean, like um of however, you know, may they rest in peace, you know, and their death might, I mean, like their death may. I, I mean, we're not going vain, you know. We're gonna fight for their families. We're gonna fight, you know, for the you know, for our people. Right. And it's not. I mean, like I said, it's not gonna take just us, you know. We gotta have people that we know from different backgrounds, different uh, races to step up to for us as well, you yeah. know. I just tweeted out just a second ago saying, like, you know, what I'm saying some of y'all need just to watch the, the movie Remember the Titans. You know, obviously that's something in our childhood that everybody watched. You know how different cultural backgrounds come together, you know, at first they, they bumped heads, but they ended up learning from each other the differences and everything like that, you know, a white man loving a, a black man, black man loving a white man and everything like that, you know, yeah. and that's a movie that I feel like a lot of people should watch and learn, you know, obviously people are not going to know, where, I mean, where we come from, people are not going to experience what we experience, you know, it, it's just the way it is, but at least you can understand, like, okay, they're going through that, we can't let, we can't let them go through that, you know, yeah. I, I, I mean, like by themselves, you know, I, I mean, like you guys call us your friends or whatnot, you know, have you, I mean, like, I mean, just have your friends back, you know, that's my, I mean, that's my think of it, you know. No, I agree. Just, just be a good human. Just address the problem. You know what I'm saying? Address the problem. Don't be silent. Address it. Yeah. Don't be silent. Address it. You were just, you were just talking on social media a second ago before right. this whole thing. <sighs> yeah. Step Yo. up. Step yeah. up. Be a voice. No um, matter if you're lower voice or high voice, just be a voice. No matter what. Yeah, we're here with Simba Webster of the LA Rams. Uh, so before we get into questions, this last question we ask every guest that comes on. First oh, wait, of all, we, we should say that for after the question and answer. Oh, after? Oh, after? Okay, so Patrick, yeah. go to the questions then. Okay, but before we do that, I think we need like a message, a little special message from one of our sponsors. One of our sponsors. Actually sponsoring the question and answer portion. So everybody, we'll be back, but first a word from our sponsor. Yeah. Have you been beat up for making bad fufu? I'm a lawyer. Has your family stopped giving you money because you won't become a doctor or engineer? I'm a lawyer. If so, you're entitled for some money. We'll help you at the law offices of Mikate and Company at 1-800-246-3654. That's 1-800-K-I-N-D-O-K-I. -I. No mamba here. I'm a lawyer. Hey, you're hilarious, Patrick. I didn't know you were gonna put that on. <laughs> hey, man. Look, that 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 law office is cool. I don't agree with their opinions about peanut butter, but other than that, I think they got reliable services. So, hey, hey. Simba, we're gonna get you on this mikate train. You're gonna eat mikate without any peanut butter. That's for sure. Oh, oh wait, wait. You eat it with peanut butter? Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. Oh, no, no. Uh, I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> you don't eat it with peanut butter? No. I give him a pet. You all right, man? It's all right. I won't hold Yo, that. Dude. Future pro bowler right here. Future <laughs> pro bowler right here. No, Patrick, go to the question. All right. Oh man, I'm. Just, <laughs> oh, God, I was. I had hope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let me let me go through these questions. Um. All right. Okay. We got we got a good amount. Okay. So starting off from Moisa Micheline. 
so exciting. Oh, that we, so, so exciting that we have you on our show uh, uh, of one of our own. I missed the beginning of this interview, but are you from LA? If not, have you had a chance to connect to the Congolese community here? Um, I, I, I'm shoot. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm from the Bay Area up north, about what five hours away. So I'm from the San Francisco, Oakland area. Mm. Uh, I have some family down here um, in the LA, but you know, I would love to connect, you know, with more Congolese. Uh, I mean, with more Congolese people and everything like that. You know, just connect and share our similarities. You know, what I'm saying, share our backgrounds and everything like that. I would love to uh, meet some more of my people for sure. Oh yeah, oh, you came to the right place because we run this town. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry. Oh, man. Go, to the, go to the next one. The next, I'm gonna go through a few because we've already answered already, but just to give oh. these people their their shout out. So obviously we answered that one about training in the pandemic. Uh-huh. Well, uh huh. it's it's definitely different, you know. I mean, obviously you can't go to these uh, major facilities that you wish to uh, work out at, so you have to find ways to adjust to the whole thing. You know, I'm finding ways at home to work out. Uh-huh. Uh, wise, I can do what I mean what I can, but you know. You kind of have to be limited to your resources and, and like your workout equipment. But I mean, obviously, I mean, honestly, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. You know, it's just an adjustment. You know, we can all do it. Strong. Okay, for sure. And the next one, we already touched on this one. So what is your favorite Congolese dish? If you say mikate with peanut butter, there's a prize. She's, she's a hater. Uh-huh. Yeah, do you hate hey, you the hater. Honestly, you I am a fan of Pondu and Kwanga. Yo, my man, this my man right there, this my man right there. My mama, she makes, uh, I mean, Kwanga for a living, and, you know, that's something oh, that I, you know, Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, I, that, that, that's something that I, I love right there. <laughs> Simba, my, see, my mom and your mom grew up together. Look, this is what I'm going to need, though. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to need to have a supplement of Kwanga for my mom. Hey, tell your mama to cook my mama, and my mama will hook it up. Oh, we got this up because honestly, like, we probably work on it as we speak. <laughs> I got a ticket to one Kwanga, man. You just hitting them up. Hey, hey. hey look, because Patrick, oh, I got a real good um Kwanga connect in DC. But if I get one in the bay, we're winning a lot closer. Let's yeah. worry. Hey, 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 100% pure. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing, I'm messing. But yeah, it's good though, bro. It's all good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, that's fine. Patrick, go, go yeah. to the next. Oh, Luis is hilarious. Let me. <laughs> hey, were you paid by Baleko before this interview? Yeah, that's right. I paid him with friendship and 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 and, and culture honoring one of our own. She's a hater, man. Oh no, 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 no. not at all, not yeah. at all. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad to be on the show. I'm glad no, to be on the show. No, for real. Like we're really glad, glad to have you. Like whatever. I know I've told you this to be a text and phone call, Sim, but whatever we can do, like help and support, you let us know. Like, you know, you tag us. Whatever we can do to su- help and support, like we here. Like, right. like when we found out we had a little brother that was playing football, we're like, oh well. Like whatever we can do, and you'll see over time, like, we're real good people. I don't know about Patrick, but we're. I'm a really. How oh, dare you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Go, ahead, Patrick. Go to the next question. Okay, this one I'm pulling from one of the, the ones we got beforehand. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, tell us about the time that your brother and Zuzi fooled the Rams coach into thinking he was you. Hilarious. <laughs> okay, okay, story time. So, <laughs> we were, so we were in London. Is after we played the Bengals, and uh, I uh, wanted my mom and my brother and some of my uh, my aunties, you know, to have their own vacation. So I brought them along as well. Uh-huh. And, and uh, after the game, my brother, you know, he came by the hotel and we're kicking in. You know, I I, um, I um, introduced him to some of the players, some of the uh, the staff members or whatnot and everything like that. So I think I happened I think to go to the bathroom or whatever. So we're at a booth, just eating, talking and stuff. You know, they're all bonding. And once I left, I think one of the coaches uh, came, I mean, the coach came by, you know, was talking, you know, obviously we're identical twins. And so I think um, I must have had a hat on. He must have had a hat on as well or something. So you can't tell because I have dreads. He doesn't. So it, oh. it's just, you know, so it was just the right timing. So, um, you know, he, he, I, mean, I, I mean, he's talking, he's talking, he's talking. I guess he mentioned my name to my brother. My brother was like in natural, just natural reaction because, you know, being identical twin, you call the person another person's name, you obviously say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just go, I, I mean, just go along with it. So that's what he did. He went along with it. 
I'm like, yeah, yeah, yes, coach, yes, coach. But obviously, he's playing, he's joking. Yes, coach, yes, coach. Uh, and then I come back and I say, What's up, coach? And he's he looks at me. It's hilarious. Whoa, 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 hold, hold on, who is that? He's like, That's my brother. He, oh, I forgot you had a twin. I'm thinking this whole time that was he, I was you. I said, Oh my god, so everybody's laughing, cracking up. He's going crazy, he's going nuts, but it wasn't just him. Uh, a lot of players coming by, you know what I'm saying, saying what's up, was we're thinking the same thing. Like, I just seen you over here, like, just, just freaking out. So, <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't just him, it was a lot, it was a, lot of, a, a bunch of other people doing it. I mean, saying the same thing. So, they were all freaking out. It, it was kind of cool, it was kind of funny. That's hilarious. See, that's the that's the benefit. You like, wait, is, <laughs> wait, wait, what is, what is your is your brother trying to, um, uh, he's trying to play pro? Or is he gonna, uh, like, what, like, what is he doing with football? Um, as of right now, yes, I mean, I mean, like he's still training and everything like that, you know. Right. I'm, mean, you know, because you know, there's a business now. I mean, I, I'm at this point, you know, he's still trying to uh, trying to uh, get the opportunity, but as well, he's uh, also got a, a, a like another background of trying to be a financial advisor, you know, and things don't work out. So he's he's taking that route, so okay, he's, he's making a living for himself right now. Oh, right that's now. Tough. No, I was gonna say, if he when he makes it, if he wanted to go to the league and he makes it to the league, you guys could be like the Morris twins and get like you blow dreads too. Oh. That would be a blessing. I would yeah. always happen. That would be a blessing. Oh, man. Right. Be a How crazy would that be? Pat, go to Pat, go to the next one. Okay. Well, uh, what's you know what, Lisa? I'll give you I'll go to yours and Lisa, but first let me just put in this one real quick. So is there any significance with the number 14 for you? I know it's position, but it's 14. Um I didn't care. Honestly, uh, going into the uh to the league, I didn't care what number I um I had. Mm -hmm. Uh I mean, I was. Um, I mean, I didn't care what number that I was uh, going to be. You know, I didn't care. But you know, I was my whole life. Uh, I was number five. You know, five was like my number from like a kid all the way through college. Mm -hmm. And then being fourteen, I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, I just want to play. You know, right, right, right. I kind of find significance. In, I mean, with that a little bit. Uh, you know, one plus four is five. So I was like, you know what? It's kind of oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's I had to into it a little bit, and then it just stuck. So I'm 14. Yeah. Oh, 14. <laughs> so everybody, you guys, make sure you guys go on LARams.com, get number 14's jersey. Do it, do it. Uh, do that, do that, do that. Uh, can I go to the next one, please? Um, does your mom actually understand the game, or is she like every Congolese mother? That's hilarious. Oh, she definitely understands the game. She definitely you – know, I mean, at first, obviously, oh, for real? Uh, growing up, you know, she – um, at first, she was kind of lost, but then watching games um, on the NFL or watching me as a kid growing up, eat, and then obviously she was there almost at every game. You know, she's the number one fan, number one supporter. Right. The whole night. She's the mama in the stands yelling, right. Respire, respire. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody loves it. Everybody loves She's the loudest person in the stands. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, she definitely else in the game because she watched the game on her own, the Raiders game, because she's a Raiders fan. She watched the game on her own and right. yelling, yelling through the TV, yeah. you know, just – she yeah, yeah, like, definitely a, I'm a fan of the game for sure. Wait, wait. So she's a Raiders fan? Your dad is a 49ers fan? So, I mean, obviously in the Bay Area, you know, you got to – you got you have to choose. Either you're a Raider yeah. or you're a Raider. Right. 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 In between, you know. Like, if you're in between, you're like, oh, brush him away. Forget him. You know, so – Honestly, my family's cut down in half. Dad's a Ray Niner fan, mom's a Raider fan, brothers, Raiders. We, were, we grew up Niners, it's split. You let me tell you something. You know what happened? The way she made the peace is the Kwanga. That's what happened. <laughs> I got to know the Kwanga. It's the Kwanga. I'm telling you, the Kwanga brings us all together. It brings uh, us all together. It, does. it yeah. definitely does. It yeah, definitely does. This one? Oh, okay, this one. The oldie but goodie. Oh yeah. Do you have a Congolese parent approved degree? Your brother does, but what about you? <laughs> <laughs> um my mom, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'll say yes, you know, I have a uh, a major communication minor in business administration. Okay. Um, you know, her biggest, I mean, who, you know, them them African mamas, you know, they don't play. Or African parents, period, they don't play. Oh they yeah. Not so it's oh my gosh. So it was it was definitely a struggle, you know, growing up, you know, trying to impress impress my mom with grades. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, with good grades, you know, coming back with a three point five, 
okay, you can do better. I'm like, oh, when, yeah. when, when am I going to get the praise from you? The actual, like, no. good job, Papa. Good job. You know, like, you know, but then honestly, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad she was that hard on me because I, I felt like, you know, once I accomplished something, I've always felt like, you know what, there's something more I can do. There's something more I can improve on. It's always room for improvement. So right. that's, about, you know, that's embedded in me in, in, in my mindset. So I'm glad that she was definitely hard on me. She wasn't that impressed with right. uh, what I brought home. No, 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 no. Simon, let me tell you something. You could get the pill, create the pill for AIDS. Your mom would say, it took you 10 years, though. Why did it take so long? Or repeat you, that question again, Mark? No, I said you can you can you can create oh. pill to help create to help cure AIDS, right? Your mom would look at you and be like, "Why did it take you so long?" It's like it cures AIDS. <laughs> You're worried about the. You know, it's always something. It's a. It's a you uh, know, yeah. I like to joke. I like to joke. Um, like every, I mean, like an African mom. Would, um, I mean, a person. I mean, like a kid would bring home a, a test, saying, "Mom, I got a 98 on my test or whatever," and the mama say. What happened to the other two points? Yeah, whatever. You like, know, like, you know, like, say, like, you know, like it's something like that. You know, it's like, dang, like, yeah. Oh, so. It ain't enough. Pat, it ain't enough. Okay, I got another one for the culture. Uh -huh. Oh, do you speak Lingala or French? Oh, um, so, je parle Lingala on peu. Uh, only a few words. I know Sangonini, Sangote. I've learned at a young age, not go beta yo. <laughs> Hey, hey, all three of us speak this broken down Lingala. We should do like uh, we should do a series just like, hey, speak Lingala with the Americans. Uh, oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm spoke French to me, but you know, I, I would hear her talk to her sister in Lingala and French and uh, uh, Kikongo mixed right. and everything uh -huh. like that. So, right, right, right. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's, it's, it's something. You know, but French, it was something that I, uh, she, uh, talked to me during my life. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, though, shout out to Zuzi. We see him in the comments laughing. They keep laughing, brother. Let's, let's hit this, uh, next question. And what's going to be with Simba Webster? Simba, brother, we appreciate this. Uh, what's the next question? Back to sports. Oh, okay. Ooh, what quarterback, past or present, would you love to catch a pass from in a game? Yo, great question. Ooh. Great question. I would have to say two. Uh -huh. Joe Montana, obviously. Joe Montana. And uh, Steve Young. Too big. Oh, Vic. 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 He, yeah. Vic had an arm. Vic had an arm. Vic had an arm. So, go oh. deep to be. I'm going to go get it. <laughs> you know, so... Hey, it's because you love Deshaun Jackson. And remember when him and Vic had that one year on uh exactly. the Eagles, exactly. Yo. Exactly, exactly. Damn, that was, you know, yeah. I was I was I'm 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 almost watching every game. I'm right. almost watching every game, you know, when they were playing with each other. So, so wait, side, the side, side note or like a different question. So you must so you must like be impressed with Desha uh, Lamar Jackson, right? And Pat Patty Mahomes, right? I mean oh, that's for sure. I love what they're doing with the game right now. You know, they're you know taking the game up a notch. You know, with their with their abilities. You know, what they're able to do. You know, so wait, wait, you were on the team when Lamar came here, to LA, right? Last Correct. year, right? Correct. Yo, how was the energy when it was there? I was just watching it on TV. I was like, this guy's incredible. He, he's the dude everybody on the other team you watch, right? When what he's on, he was like, watch. you know what, like. You're like, okay, you, you've been seeing, you know, what he's been doing throughout the season. You're like, okay, okay, yeah, but I guess us, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. Right. You know? um, and you guys are a good team. That's the watching thing. What he, watching what he does, uh -huh. watching what he did with his passing, you know, making plays, being a playmaker, you know, picked us apart, you know. Right. You got to give him, you know, I mean, his respect, you know. Yeah. Got to give him respect. Got to. Man. Woo. Fire. Patrick, next question, please. Um, you know what? That was the last question, but I did have a question of my own, just off the side. Um, so obviously, you know, you Congolese uh, football player. Um, I know there's another dude in the league. What is his name? Jonathan? Con what is it? Congo on the 49ers, I think. So, so uh, like, honestly, I didn't even know there was another player who's Congolese in. in, in, in I mean, like in the league. I, I, I'm not sure. It's like here and there. Like there's a few people because I was trying to you know look it up obviously to see, right. and there's like some people who are you know some of them are like 
undrafted free agents as well. They just didn't get picked up or not for a long time. Like I think there was one dude okay. on the on the, the Packers. Okay. Uh, there's a, and there's a few people from like, you know, from the 90s and 2000s who were in it for a few years, right. but nobody, you know, I think that ever got like that shine. Um, right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, obviously for our people, you know, of course, soccer is going to be it. For huge, you know? I mean, it's huge, you know. I mean, being just a few, I mean, I'm grateful, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm grateful. I, you know, so I was to represent y'all. I mean, represent us, you know, uh, you know, for as long as I can, you know, build my platform to uh, bring, you know, just build the country up, you know, just, you know, just make it on the on, on the big screen, you know, for, uh, you know, for the people. So I'm all for that. Yeah, I think it's funny because I think you're going to be – you're going to be a, uh, I don't want to say a spokesperson, but you're going to be a trendsetter because, you know, we didn't play basketball until like maybe last 20 years until, you know, Hakeem and then Matumbo and uh, right. Bowl, right? So yeah. they have, they have one African on one NBA team. Oh, Serge Baca, actually. He's going to release. Right, yeah. right, right. So it's Serge yeah. Baca. Mm -hmm. Now you see like an influx of all these like Congolese players are there. So I think you, you just keep working hard like you are. And, um, you're gonna, you're gonna. Oh, he said, don't forget Tim. Uh, be, uh, oh, you know, I know, I know Tim. I just don't know his name. He was a dope wide receiver on Carolina. He was real. I, I actually do know the name. I didn't even know he was Congolese. I don't know, I don't know he, what's called. He used to play. He's playing Carolina with. Um, remember Jake DeHome? Was it Jake the or uh, Jim DeHome on the? It was right before, um, before they got Cam or whatever that quarterback or whatever. Oh, okay. And, I mean, I'm not too yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so he was a pretty good wide receiver. He had a pretty good career, but I didn't know he was from the league. I, I thought it was Ghanaian, but that's good to know. Shoot. Yeah. That's good to know. You're, you're gonna oh, play the Tennessee. All right, holla. Well, somebody you posted that earlier. I don't want to butcher your name, brother. She Chiunza. Who who are you talking about that played for Tennessee if you're still watching? Um Tim um Tim um Biakabutuka. Oh, he played at Tennessee? Yeah, well he played at T with Tennessee University, but he played for Carolina. Yeah. yeah. Strong. That's dope. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, a right. running back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Back. Okay. So he was. He was like, yeah, I remember on that team before Cam got on. But um, oh, Patrick, we got any more questions? I'm looking through. I mean, unless some people throw some in at the last second. Last second. Uh, with Simba Webster, L.A. Ram. And he's gonna ball out this year. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get this jersey. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, Simba, is I'm gonna get two jerseys. I'm gonna get no. I'm gonna get three. I'm gonna get one. You're gonna sign. No, all three gonna sign. No, two you'll sign. One, I'm going to rock. Two, I'm going to hang up. Got to support. Got to hang. We got to hang up a simple Webster jersey. Hey, right? you, man. Yeah. Love, man. That's no, love, no, 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 no. It's for real because you're doing, you know, you're doing great and you're representing us to like the fullest. I guess, Patrick, uh -huh. should, I get to the, should I get to the last? Uh, he said, Kong. Kong, but okay, the dude I said before. Okay, he played for Tennessee. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. And he's, um, okay, and he says that dude was at Michigan. Is that Michigan? Oh, that's a beast. Oh, okay. I, hey, I did have one question. I mean, I'm kind of messing around with it, but just wondering. Now that you're on the NFL, I mean, have you gotten that call from back home? Hey, Petit, you know, you know, hey, could you hook me up? You know that? Can I get some money? Call from like from Congo. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, my aunties have me end up, you know, just being dramatic. Oh, you're going to buy me a car. You know, take me, take me, take me here, take me there. You know, like, it's, 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 I kind of laugh at them, but obviously they're just glad that I'm in a position, you know. Obviously, I want to help uh, my people in so many ways, you know, and everything like that. So, uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to just do it all just for me. I want to, you know, I, I'm, I'm not doing it all for me. I'm doing it for my people, my family. Right. And, you know, just have, use my platform to give, you know. Oh, um, what you call it? Let me. Um, yeah, yeah. It's his brother, right? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What touchdown celebration when you score a touchdown? Oh, so you know the name is Simba. Uh -huh. So I was, I was thinking. I, was, I mean, it's, it's it, I mean, it, it, I mean, I can't be corny, but I was thinking to do a little mark on my head after I score, do a little mark like this. Uh, you know? yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So not, if not, if not I'll, I'll probably hit a little, a little African dance or do a little Bay Area dance or something like that. Hey, you know? If you hit that Dumbo once, you'll blow up Congolese internet. Oh no, yeah, oh no, they'll go crazy. Like, hey, right. in the morning I be so I said I could play football. Like a BM dance, a BM dance or something oh, like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you, would, you, would, you, would, you would blow up every voice of Congo, Congo to global. They wouldn't know what to do with it. It would just be too much. Yeah, I mean, 
I'll definitely, I'll definitely do, I mean, like do like a Congolese dance, you know, straight from the motherland. So I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do that for the people. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I look forward to it. Uh, so we're coming to an end. We're here with Simba Webster from the LA Rams, our brother. So this is one question we ask every guest on here. Um, <clears throat> what is your spirit animal? So what's an oh. animal that like characteristics you you share or you like, yo, I want to embody that? Like for me, it's a panther. For Patrick, it's a falcon. Falcon. I mean, I think my company may may no 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 not a red not a red <laughs> <laughs> not a red. I mean, go red, but not a real. For me, um, I see. Uh, I um answered that question last year, and I to me, I mean, it may be obvious, but me is a lion, you know. Um, and the reason why I, I mean for me is that is because the their drive, their hunger, you know, to to uh to, to uh, I mean to fight in the wild, you know, fight when, you know, odds may be against you. And I've learned that, you know, lions have a 30% chance of, you know what I'm saying, getting their prey, you know what I'm saying, when they hunt, you know? So it's just that hunger, that drive for them to, you know, you know, to get their prey. And that's something I embody, you know, I'm always, I'm always working. I'm always, you know, have that hunger, that drive to be better, you right. know? And yeah, but, I mean, that's something that I embody. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Congolese, we don't have spirit animals. Our mothers will cast it out. Let me say something, yeah. Simba. There are haters that are in the comment section. I just want to be very clear. Uh, and there are haters. You know what I'm saying? But no, I like that. A lion. There it is. I like yeah. that. So um, so we came to the end, end of this oh, wait, Before you go to the end, but I have one question. I was just wondering one thing. Uh, Simba, because obviously you and your brother are twins. And I know there's a significance to it, but you being Simba, him being Zuzi, is that something particular to your tribe? Or Yeah. It is. Um, I'm not sure what tribe, but my mother, I mean, I was told by my mom at a young age, you know, Simba, you know, with the N in front, um, Simba and Zuzi are like uh, set names for twins. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, my name meaning firstborn, his name meaning secondborn. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's, that's even boys or girls, I'm Patrick. Boys or girls. I have cousins that are named the, the same. Yeah, so so and, I, think yeah. it might be, but I think it's by Congo, but I'm not sure. I'm um, not sure either. I have yeah. to uh, ask my mom about that. Yeah. You know, oh, that's dope, that's dope. Because I know Nigerians, they have, what is it? I think it's Kehende and Taiwo, their version of that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's strong. That's, cool. that's strong. That's so cool. we came to the end of the podcast. Yeah, uh, Simba, yo, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you have yo. no idea. Like, hopefully this is like the start for you to like, you know, you have us here in LA, you know, and we're like a bridge of the Congress people that are here in LA that you could, uh, haters, um, what you call it, uh, um, you can a uh, bridge to the Congolese community out here, so you uh, uh -huh. have our support. Go ahead and plug your um, your social media. You said what? I'm sorry. Go ahead, and plug your social media where people can find you. Okay, man. Uh, Y'all can follow me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, at my shoot right there. You know, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, my yeah. name is Webster. You know, seen by Webster. So, uh, yeah, you can uh, follow me there. You know, I you know, you know I follow you back and everything like that. So yes, so and love also. Also, number four, LARams.com, number 14, okay? Get by his jersey. You guys always buy those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all yeah. yeah. go do that. Y'all go do that. Y'all go do that. Those cheap-ass Versace um, suits that you guys wear to parties and then return them on Sundays after the party. Go buy his jersey because he has a high jersey. We can help keep him in the league. Keep him in the league. Hey, <laughs> spam uh, the LA Rams, all their social media. Tag his name in it. Just go ahead. Just do it, everybody. Just, Just do, it. do it. Just do it. And then, uh, Patrick, like, you your social media? Uh, you can find me at Congolese.YouTubers or African.YouTubers. We promote the culture, Congolese, and the diaspora. And you can follow me through Bantu Boys. Make sure Instagram, YouTube, like us on Facebook. And make sure you guys share it. Share it, share it, share it. Um, you can follow me, Blake Louisa, Blake Louisa, Louisa Jr., Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And then uh, follow my other podcast, What's Up the Podcast. Um, yeah. That's it. Thank you guys and God bless and you guys be safe. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Simba. Thank you so much for coming on. All right, everybody. Peace. Peace. Peace.